and welcome to this week's Tarot Cards, Temperance. The RWS has keywords, economy, moderation, frugality, management, and accommodation. The Guided Tarot by Stephanie Camponi has keywords, moderation, harmony, and divine timing. For numerology, it is 1 plus 4 equals 5, and that is connected to the Hierophant, which is the fifth card. In astrology, it is connected to Sagittarius, adventure, seeking higher wisdom, truth, optimism. Now, in the guided tarot, Temperance reveals a promising path forward, but one that requires us to reach out for assistance from the divine. An angel stands with one foot on land and one foot in the water as they pour water back and forth between cups. The water appears to flow in both directions at once, representing the process of alchemy wherein the impossible becomes possible through a connection with the divine. This card tells you that if you choose the path of thoughtful moderation, the divine will support you by taking action on your behalf. This is how alchemy works in the spiritual realm. And from the spir personal spiritual reading, whether you are struggling with something specific or just feeling lost, now is the perfect time to connect with the divine and welcome the messages you receive. Use your intuitive guidance to move forward on your path to reach your higher self. Surrender to the plans of the universe. And uh, Biddy Tarot, whoops, my book fell. <laughs> Biddy Tarot says, Temperance has a large winged angel who is both masculine and feminine. So I'm going to refer to them as they are you know them. They are wearing a light blue robe with a triangle inside of a square on the front. The triangle is humans bound by earth and natural law, which is the square. The feet are balancing on, there's one on the rock that's symbolizing needing to stay grounded, and then there's one in the water symbolizing needing to be in the flow. They are pouring water between two cups, symbolizing the flow and alchemy of life. There is a winding path behind going up to a mountain range. This is the journey through life. Above that is a gold crown in a glowing light, symbolizing taking a higher path and staying true to your purpose and meaning. Now let's look at some of the other decks that I chose to look at for temperance. From the Tarot of the Sorceress. This is temperance. Um, temperance is a card of moderation, communication, alternation and communicating vessels. It can also represent a guardian angel, the benevolent protection that invites you to show moderation and reflection and elevation of your mind. Temperance is surrounded by many candles, lights in the heart of darkness, and other references to Yule. Ivy protects the home, while holly symbolizes renewal with the reappearance of sunlight and lengthening days. Blessed thistle calls for a purification of the home, and frankincense brings balance in complete harmony with temperance. With his or her light and alternation, temperance forges a connection between Samhain, a knight of otherworldly creatures, and the devil card, which represents an essential inner hidden world. He or she is a bridge, a path opens both ways that enables round trips and rebalancing. He or she can invite you to explore your own shadows and light 
weigh the pros and cons or listen to your intuition without forgetting the voice of reason. Reason. Yule is the shortest day of the year. It is the winter solstice, a festival in which we celebrate the imminent return of the sun. Temperance symbolizes all the hopes of the shortest day and the longest night and the way towards the equinox, the perfect balance. Yule is also a sign of gathering with your loved ones with gifts, love, and communication. Reaching across to get my tea. <laughs> Okay, the next one is the Wild Unknown. I really didn't have for this one too many that, you know, were completely different, actually. So, the Great Blue Heron remains calm and peaceful as she blends the opposing elements of fire and water. The Temperance card asks you to be a moderator, much like the Heron. Focus on cooperation and compromise. If you've been excessive in one aspect of your life, practice self-restraint and moderation now. You'll find a new sense of healing and balance from bringing a little harmony back into your life. Next is the Divine Tarot. As with the hanging man, the fool now sees balance once again manifesting itself. Here, an angel floats in midair with opposite forces of fire and water issuing from her outstretched hands. Fire rising into the air, water falling to the earth. All four elements are thus represented despite not being specifically depicted. The angel is not shown to be flying in any direction. Instead, she is static hovering and maintaining equilibrium by the equal and balanced opposing forces held here in moderation and balance. This one is different because this book, because they give different people's viewpoints and I haven't looked at the front to see who these are. I know it explains it up front, but I only read what the author of the book, what he said. Now we have the Enchanted for Hoxha. There is a story of a force within the land of For Hoxha that controls and comforts the storms. With a lift of their arms, this powerful creature guides torrents of rain down their back, transforming it into a peaceful stream of water that nourishes the ground without flooding or destruction. It takes a great deal of power to combine the frenetic energy of the sky above with the calm energy of the earth to reach harmony and equilibrium. Temperance arrives when storms form and when moderation helps you move forward without getting carried away by too much energy. Now is the time to find balance and bring forces together where there is no single great power. When you join elements together, you create a place where growth thrives. Now we have the wild wood tarot. And this one is called balance in this deck. The polarized energies of the land interweave and intertwine around the staff of the heavens, generating the pulse of life. Red and white serpents coil around a great tree, the heart of the wild wood. Red and white energies represent the basic colors of a primal world. Red for blood, fire, and iron. White for milk, ash, and bone. These colors are particularly relevant to Bel Beltane as it lies at the junction on the wheel between air, white, and fire, red. 
and from this interaction comes creative impulses. The ancient symbol of the caduceus, right? The caduceus echoes the double helix of human DNA, the building blocks of life, where each strand contains the information of the whole. The human face of the wildwood has both a light and a dark side, shown here in the face of the wooden mask carved into the tree itself. Both are natural and necessary components of the human condition. The balance between humanity and nature is vital. The intricate mechanisms that are the arteries and nervous system of the earth are as sensitive and complex as that of any living organism. And we have succeeded in shifting this delicate balance from one of finely tuned interaction to a malignant and polluted environment. The ancient peoples of the earth long ago recognized their dependence on the ecosystem of the planet to sustain and renew their children. Modern society has become completely detached from that reality and believes the planet is here only for our selfish and greedy consumption. The renewal is taken for granted, yet we have poured toxic waste into the seas and landscapes so that our offspring will be facing death a thousand years from now. Our abuse of the natural world has annihilated whole species of creatures and rent a hole in the very fabric of the atmosphere that makes life on this planet possible. This is a crime beyond comprehension and humankind will be paying the price for generations to come. Temperance is the traditional name of this card and it represents a state of inner strength and tranquility from which deeper knowledge of the self and the universe can be absorbed and contemplated. It is the key to the higher self both on the personal level and as a species, we must strive to find a balance. You must be balanced and patient. The time is right to rest and contemplate all the facets of your existence. To continue now, you must be still and calm. Finding the inner balance that will enable you to see beyond the present state is a process of true trust and confidence in your own strength. These facets may include the parts of your psyche that you would rather not deal with, but no amount of denial will rid you of the need to absorb and reclaim them. Balance is absolutely necessary to free the inner self from the fears and self-doubts that keep us spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind. Once the natural state of balance is achieved, the plateau that will give you access to the higher self will be open before you. Now we have the Sacred Circle Tarot. Which is called Initiation instead. The card shows the initiatory maze with the cauldron of rebirth and inspiration at its center. A woodpecker rises from the smoke. The border bears the hazelnuts of wisdom and chervil herb. In many cultures, oops, I skipped the page. Initiation is a ritual death, renewal, and rebirth. It is not a single event, nor is it conferred by a ceremony. It is a continuous journey of expanding consciousness. The journey is symbolized by the double spiral, which first curves inward, the declining death spiral to the center the point of initiation and renewal. It then moves outward, the unfolding spiral of new life. During the process of initiation, the candidate undergoes the death of his old self and travels to the underworld, following in the footsteps of the God at Herfest. He leaves behind his previous worldview, what he was before he died, as he re-enters the womb of the mother. There he is tested, and refined to prove his worthiness to enter the cauldron of renewal and come to rebirth as the God does at Yule, sharing a new worldview. Because of his rebirth, he is called the twice born. Each individual repeats this process and brings it alive in his or her own body, 
the human journey as a mirror of the divine quest and the cycle of the year. Before the mysteries, the candidate stands alone. Often, initiation is marked by a ceremony that is a confirmation of what has happened or of what is happening within. In ancient times, this might involve the candidate groping in darkness through a labyrinth or maze, following the inward curving Wittershins spiral of death toward the center of the maze where all things meet, like the center of the magician's circle. The point of illumination and rebirth. From then on, he would follow the unfolding outward diocil spiral of his new life. In Britain, the long barrow tombs of the megalithic people became vessels of initiation for living candidates. When a sacred king died, he was buried in a long barrow in the fetal position, the barrow being both the tomb in which his dead body was laid and the womb of the earth goddess where he awaited his rebirth. A living initiatory candidate would enter the barrow tomb enacting a symbolic death and lie in the dark womb of the goddess waiting for his vision of illumination, an experience of unity of the cosmos, the web in its totality. Afterward, he would crawl out of the tunnel at the front of the barrow, which represented the birth canal, his symbolic rebirth from the mother. The other world traveler emerged into a new state of understanding, certain events, experiences, and visions having conferred knowledge that permanently altered his outlook on the everyday world his entire being having been changed, repolarized. In many cultures, the candidate would be given a special potion or drink containing sacred herbs, enabling him to experience visions and many levels of consciousness, as we saw in the card of the shaman. The cauldron represented in this card, however, is far more profound. It is the womb of the goddess, which is the source of all life and reabsorbs all souls and death before bringing them to rebirth. The card shows a woodpecker rising from the cauldron. The bird is thought to be a herald of rebirth as it climbs trees in a sunwise spiral. In stories, the woodpecker knows where treasure is hidden and the location of the mysterious herb springwort, which could open doors and locks, not physical doors and locks, but spiritual ones opening the way to the true self. The herb must be earned and the woodpecker picks out the eyes of anyone who tries to steal it. Chervil is one of the sacred herbs of initiation. It bears five seeds, the sacred goddess number, and is dedicated to the goddess Caridon and the secret of her cauldron, which can both be seen as her earth womb of regeneration and as the healing herbs it brings forth, which forever change the consciousness of the initiate. It reminds us of the immortality of the soul through the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, and is used to attune to the higher self. Nuts are a Celtic symbol of concentrated wisdom, the sweetness of knowledge contained, compact in a hard shell, hence the expression, the matter in a nutshell. The hazel was associated with sacred springs and wells believed to be entrances to the other world. Ugh, my fingers do not want to work today. In many cultures, rites of passage mark the transition from one period of life to another. For example, a girl's first menstruation and her transition to womanhood or marriage, the transition from the single life to the married one, and so on. This is one kind of initiation, the passage from one state to a new one. When the initiation card appears in your spread, it may mark such a transition, the nature of which can be divined from surrounding cards. The woodpecker signifies that one cycle has ended and another is about to begin. The success of any enterprise depends on cooperation with and consideration for others. Existing relationships can reach new levels of happiness and fulfillment by taking time to understand and accept the feelings of your partner. A spiritual initiation also marks the passage from one state to another, a state of new consciousness. When the initiation card appears in your spread, it marks the dawning of spiritual awareness and joy. 
This is a card of balance and harmony derived from working with sympathetic people in a relationship of equal give and take. And we have one more. The Gaian Tarot. Combining opposites. The winged one lifts a shell to pour out her blessings into a bowl of burning herbs. Instead of water, she pours the refracted light of a rainbow. Her third eye glows with sacred knowledge and farsight. The steam-filled pool distorts her reflection or is the distortion an accurate picture of another kind? She is a mixed race child. The bloodlines of many cultures run within her body. By her example, she calls to us to integrate all the disparate parts of ourselves. Her gifts are those of healing, creativity, and the integration of light and shadow within us. The word temperance comes from the Latin temperare, to combine or to mix. This card is about combining diverse elements to create something new. As such, it is often the signature card of artists. Blue and red make purple. Rain and sun make rainbows. Water and fire make steam. The full moon rises as the sun sets. The sun rises as the full moon sets. This perfect balance of opposites graces us with extraordinary beauty. Temperance offers the serenity of the middle way between polarities. Embrace the different parts of your personality and life's experiences, both light and shadow, joyful and painful. They all combine together resulting in your unique individuality. This is an opportunity for the inner spiritual life to harmonize with the external life of the workaday world. Temperance offers the discovery that your whole life is a work of art. It also indicates someone who may be in need of healing on a spiritual or physical level. And the winged one, a descendant of the ancient bird goddesses, will facilitate that. She may also guide you into the role of becoming a healer yourself. So that's this week's temperance card. Until next video, lessons in the dark and wild.